So that brings us now to our third step. Is this waste something we call a listed hazardous waste? We've looked at is it a waste, is it exempted? If it is a waste and it's not exempt, the third step is, is this a listed hazardous waste? There are four different lists that are in the hazardous waste rules. Two of them describe waste streams that have not been through a process. They are unused. The other two waste lists are for those that have been through a process and are used. We usually identify or name these lists by the waste codes that are within them. So for instance, we refer to the P list. Well, the P list, all of the waste codes within the P list start with the letter P. The U list, the waste codes start with the letter U. The K list starts with the letter K, etc. So four different lists. Two of them for waste streams that are unused are the P list and the U list. For wastes that have been through a process, we have the K list and the F list. So let's look at these a little more closely. Starting with, perhaps the most confusing of the hazardous waste lists, the P and the U list. Now the P list, the waste codes start with P, and these wastes are what we call the worst of the worst. They are known as acutely hazardous waste. They can be very, very dangerous in even small quantities. Because of that, you can become a very highly regulated generator with just a small amount of P-listed waste. The second is the U-list. These are also toxic, but not quite as bad as those that are on the P-list. So, in order to be regulated as one of these wastes, number one, the chemical has to be on one of those two lists. Secondly, it has to be something that's called a sole active ingredient. And the way I describe a sole active ingredient is that it's the material or chemical ingredient in a product that makes it do what it's supposed to. So for the example that I use, I look at hornet spray. If you have hornet spray, you read the ingredient list and it says 98.6% inert ingredients. And you say to yourself, why did I pay $5.99 for something that's 98.6% useless? Well, it's not useless. The inert ingredients are those that are the, uh, the propellant to deliver the pesticide. They are maybe a dispersant to make it spread out more so that you get better coverage. But it's not what kills the bug. The 1.4% of a pesticide is the active ingredient. And if that pesticide, if there's just one pesticide, that's a sole active ingredient. Now consider, what if I look at another can of Hornet spray and it said 98% inert ingredients and 1% of one pesticide and another percent of a different pesticide. That would have two active ingredients and in that case could not be one of these unused listed wastes. It has two active ingredients. We only regulate those that are one active ingredient. I know it seems counterintuitive that two active ingredients can be just as dangerous or more dangerous than a material with one active ingredient. But it's the way that these rules were set up years and years ago, and we if think it's likely that if it's not listed, if it's not hazardous for this reason, then we'll get it in the fourth or the fifth step and regulate it that way. Regardless, sole active ingredient material must be on one of those two lists. So where are those lists located? You might want to take a read of them yourself. Well, they're located at ENVHW 402.04, if you want to go there. And when you turn to that page, or you go to that web page, you'll see a table that looks like this. In the first column is the waste code, which all of the waste codes start with the letter P. 
in the third column is the name of the chemical that we regulate. Now if you were to read through this list of chemicals, you'd find a lot of exotic names, a lot of things that you're probably have never seen before and may never see in your life. And fortunately, for most hazardous waste generators, we don't see these chemicals, we don't deal with these. The P-listed wastes are most commonly created by folks in the healthcare industry. Many of these are medicines that, as you know, in the right dose can save your life, but in the wrong dose can be extremely dangerous. So those two columns. And then the third column in the middle is something called a chemical abstracts number. Many names, many chemicals have multiple names. And if you were to look at your can of Hornet spray at the ingredients, you might find the name of a chemical, look on the table, and not find it there. So you say, oh, okay, obviously this is not regulated. But in reality, it is there under a different name. So if you look at the name of the chemical, and frankly just Google it, look for the chemical abstract number for that chemical. Then check out this table, the third column, the center column, and find out if it's listed there. Now the next table we look at is the U list, all of which, all of the waste codes obviously start with the letter U. Once again, same format, first column is the waste code, third column is the name of the chemical regulated, but in this instance, if you were to read through the chemicals, you'd probably find some that you do work with. One that's very common that we can see here is acetone. Acetone is a common solvent. It's so common you may have it in your household for using as fingernail polish remover. Regardless, these U-listed chemicals are a bit more common. A wider base of industries will run across these and be regulated because of them. Third column in the center again is that CAS number that we just talked about. Now, a little bit more on the sole active ingredient. You remember I said that it's the one chemical in a product that makes it do what it's supposed to. So in order to figure out if you have a P or U listed waste, you need to start by knowing what ingredients are in your product. And your label on your container is a good place to start. An SDS, a safety data sheet, is also a great resource. Sometimes you may need to dig even a little bit deeper to find out all of the ingredients in a particular product. Regardless, that's the first way, first step to find out if you have one of these listed wastes. If you have one chemical that makes it do what it's supposed to, you have a sole active ingredient. But if you have two or more that do the same thing, you do not have the sole active ingredient. Likewise, if you find out you have a sole active ingredient, but it's not on either of those two lists, it's not regulated for that reason. To summarize, to be a P or U listed waste, you must have something that is unused, never been through a process. Secondly, it must have a sole active ingredient. And third, that sole active ingredient must be identified on either the P list or the U list.